Hi there, it's Davina, and I'm in my Lego Craft Mind Blocks t-shirt, and uh, I'm going to be showing you how to make freezer strawberry jam. This is stuff that goes directly into your refrigerator or your freezer. You cannot keep it on your regular shelves. And uh, as usual, this is going to be a real-time video letting you know exactly how long this all takes. It is 9.33 right now, so I... Uh, Need to start off by cleaning my kitchen sink, which is full of dirty dishes. But I can't put them in the dishwasher because that's full of clean dishes. And it's really windy, and that's going to keep making clanking sounds throughout this entire video. So I'm going to empty out my dishwasher, empty out my sink, clean my sink, clean the countertops and stovetop, and then we'll be back to actually doing the project. Okay. It is 9.53, so that's about 20 minutes. Give yourself about 20 minutes to clean up your kitchen, get all of your supplies together, and then you'll be ready to start cooking. Now let's talk about supplies. I know, the first thing you're gonna be is <gasps> strawberries. We're making strawberry jam, we need strawberries. Hold on, let's talk hardware first. You're going to need the largest steel pot that you have, not aluminum, not nonstick, it has to be steel on the inside. You've got to be very sure that it is not aluminum. Aluminum will give a metallic flavor to your jam. I mean, if you're really into metal, rock on and go for it, but I do not recommend it. It is not tasty. Now I have a bigger pot than that. It goes way up in there. It's huge. And that was back when I was, uh, well, owned a jam making business, we're not going to be using that because we're working with a small quantity. If you're harvesting your own strawberries, your own fruit from your yard, it is unlikely that you will have enough to make a huge batch unless you have a tree. If you are trying to make apple butter from a tree that you have or plum jam from a tree that you have, trees make huge amounts of fruit. So in those cases, you might actually need a bigger pot or you're going to be doing a bunch of repeated uh, cannings in the smaller pots that you have but for what we're doing this is fine now my strawberries are not a huge amount and that that looks like it's overkill this might expand and froth up and that's why you want your biggest pot if you go with a smaller saucepan it's going to end up boiling over and then you will have the beautiful smell of burning sugar all throughout your house. Not good. Other good tools to have. Uh, a spoon for stirring that. Metal or wood? Ah, uh, doesn't really matter. But I tend to go for metal just because it's easier to scrape the bottom sometimes. Sometimes wood doesn't quite do the thing unless you've got a square bottomed sort of wooden spatula, that might work pretty well. Uh, you might want one of these uh, canning funnels. Uh, they make it just easy to put the jam into your end device. We'll be talking about the end containers in a bit, um, but it just has a wider opening and it's easy to blop chunky jam through where it will go into your container. So that's nice to have. You may want to have a candy thermometer uh, just to Keep track of the temperature and usually a uh, candy and deep fry thermometers will have markings on here like 104 celsius or 220 fahrenheit that's jelly uh 110 celsius or 230 syrup and it's got fudge softball hardball hard crack work we're gonna stay in the lower temperatures for that so the nice thing about candy thermometer is you stick it and you leave it and as long as the tip of that is down inside of your jam, you're gonna be getting a pretty good temperature. And uh, don't let it touch the bottom of the pan, just a little bit above that, but still in the jam, that's what you want. Okay, you're gonna need measuring cup. Not just a dry one, but also one for your strawberries. Now, most recipes are gonna call for four cups of fruit and four cups of sugar. And I know that's a lot of sugar, but we'll talk about options for that because we're using 
a recipe that is not shelf safe, it goes straight into your refrigerator, you can actually do sugar-free or less sugar versions of a freezer jam. That's something you can't do if you're going to home can and put it in your cupboard. So if it's going to the refrigerator, you can totally skimp on the sugar or substitute it out. If it's going to the cupboard, you need the sugar to keep bacterial and fungal growth from happening. So you're going to have want four cups of wet and then four cups for dry. I am going to be using a blender just to make some of it a strawberry puree and then I will have nice pretty chunks floating in the strawberry puree. So you could just do straight up chunks but um, I'll show you why I do the blender technique in a bit. Okay now over to where we're going to put the jam when it's finished. Think about that first. A lot of people don't think about where they're going to put the jam until it's already made. So you could get some of these nice canning jars with the lids that once it's pulled a vacuum seal, this button pops down. And those are nice and they're nice to gift out. However, people have a tendency to see this kind of thing and they put it up into their cupboards not refrigerated so you would have to pay, put a big thing keep refrigerated on the lid of this so that people would remember i also like using the small ones when i'm gifting out a freezer jam so that it goes into the refrigerator and gets used quickly you don't want something like this to stick around for a year in your refrigerator you've got to use it because it is not fully cooked and airtight canned so I don't like using these for refrigerator jam. Plastic containers with little snap top lids. Oh yeah, you see something in that, you're gonna use it. That, that's like instinct. So I've just, uh, I'm gonna be filling up these. They just came out of my dishwasher. And that's pretty much all of the sanitization that I use for refrigerator jam. If I was doing a shelf canning, I would have these boiled up, kept at a high temperature. I would heat the lid and snap it on so it pulls a vacuum seal. You know, these are good for that. You cannot boil your plastic ware without the risk of maybe melting it. So that makes it good for a refrigerator jam or a freezer jam. These are really good freezer safe containers. You could use glass for that. You could use steel for that if you're popping it into the freezer. By the way, reason why it's freezer jam is you can put it in your freezer for up to a year. And then after that, well, the flavor starts getting less fresh. So um, plastic containers, is what I'm going to be using today. And I'm probably going to have more jam than that. So then I'm going to move over to a lidded steel container. Um, this is not, notice, this is not an airtight lid, uh, but we're hoping to use this jam rather quickly. You can also put it into pretty containers like this or like this. And you just put the jam in there and you use it almost immediately. So if you're making this up, uh, the day before a brunch or something like that and you're going to have maybe a tea with some family and you want to show off your jam you could put it into a pretty thing like this just leave it uncovered in your refrigerator um hopefully it won't you won't have like chopped onions in your refrigerator that will give your strawberry jam a smell but um yeah something like this is just fine if you are going to gift it out in a pretty dish like this my grandmother would have filled it up to about here with jam and then for the top quarter to a half inch she would have filled it with paraffin and she would have given it and told them knock off the paraffin and eat it this week and all of her friends would know oh yeah that's a freezer jam she just put that on top so it wouldn't slosh out they used to can with paraffin before we came up with these fantastic lids but everybody who can't with paraffin knew that you had to regularly check to make sure that the paraffin hadn't gotten an air gap between it and the jar. You had to regularly check to see if there was any mold discoloration. And if there was, well, that got fed to the chickens or something. Yeah, um, 
a lot of food went to waste back then because they didn't have better canning techniques. So don't can with paraffin. Don't try to put it on your shelf. If you do anything with paraffin, it's just for a refrigerator jam that you toss in your refrigerator. The wax is just there to keep funky smells out and then you knock it off and you eat that rather quickly. There's also cool little snap lids like this. I'm not using this one because it's full of tea, but uh, this style where it's got a nice rubber gasket, that works really nicely. It's glass, so it's got all the properties of one of these snap top plastics, but it's glass and it looks pretty. So if I were giving some away as a gift, this is my gift choice and this is my home choice. This is for company. This is for me. This I'm not even going to entertain because I don't want it to be confused with what's going up into the cupboards. Okay, we've talked about the hardware. Oh yeah, forgot, you're gonna want a knife. Now let's talk about the software, the fruit and the sweetener and the jellyizer. We'll get to that in a second. Let's talk about sugar first. Now, granulated sugar, it's great stuff, has a crystalline structure. It will make your jam hold better for longer. Um, Honestly, bacteria does not like a huge amount of sugar. Fungus does not like a huge amount of sugar. It is a preservative. Like you've seen candied ginger and candied melon. That stuff is shelf stable because the sugar has sucked all of the moisture out of it and solidified. So it's good for preserving, but we're doing a freezer jam, which means we're going to be using cold temperatures to keep it from you know getting populated by stuff so you don't have to use sugar you could choose honey i'm not going to use either of these two first off uh, these are the only two honeys i have in my house right now and this one comes from new zealand it's from the tea tree tree and uh, is very expensive and has a very strong flavor. This, I would think about using it because, oh, look, mint, but it's mint and dill. And the dill flavor is not something that I really wanna add in with my strawberries. Because bees kind of get some of the essence of whatever blossoms they've been pollinating, clover has a very neutral flavor and would work well with this jam or straight up mint would give a little bit of mintiness to the jam you can find orange blossom honey if you're in an area that has citrus trees you can find apple or cherry blossom honey so look for what it is and if it doesn't really tell you and it just says wildflower honey or you know is unidentified um taste it first to see if it's got any spiciness or um weird flavors that might be odd to put in with your strawberries. I'm not going to use this because I don't want dill strawberry jam. Okay, next, what about other sweeteners like monk fruit or uh, Splenda or uh, Stevia? Well, from Splenda and Stevia, I know Splenda comes up with a crystalline structure that they say you can use in baking and cooking and it will sweeten things but I happen to like monk's fruit because of the texture it gives the food this gives it a nice uh, texture I find better than uh, the brand Splenda um, so I, I usually go with monk's fruit for my uh, false sugar sweetener and I'm probably gonna use some of that but I don't have a ton of it um, and it's usually a lot more expensive than straight-up granulated sugar so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use up the last of my golden monk fruit here the golden color doesn't throw off the strawberry color in my opinion it's just slightly brownish more like raw sugar than um, crystallized white and then after adding in this as a portion of the sugar, then I'm going to use the rest of it being regular sugar. I don't have to, if I wanted to just cut down on the sugar a lot and just use monk's fruit, 
that's where we get into acids. A lot of recipes will say add some lemon juice and they say that because a lot of fruit needs extra acid to stay shelf stable and to keep its bright color. So to keep things from oxidizing, the juice of a lemon is usually asked for. Well, what about oranges and what about limes? Oranges also have citric acid and they have a nice flavor, uh, less strong citrusy than a lemon. However, so strawberries are more acidic than oranges. So adding an orange is actually diluting the natural acid that's in the strawberries. So I might uh, juice this. This is actually a blood orange. So I might juice this and add it in for flavor, maybe even take off some of the peel and put that in the blender with some of the strawberries to add some extra dimension to my strawberry jam. But um, no, that's, that's not gonna be where I get my acid. Could I use limes? Limes also have slightly less citric acid than a lemon. And I enjoy the flavor of a lime, so you might want to Instead of just juice of one lemon, do two limes or one and a half limes. But I would rather save my limes for other things like squeezing on top of tacos or, you know, spring rolls or, you know, cocktails. So I'm going to save my limes for something else and I'm going to mostly use lemon and then for flavor, a bit of orange. So now we're finally to the strawberries. Now these, of course, they're from a big container and I bought these at the discount grocery store, which means some of them are a little bit green and some of them are a little bit past. So one of the things you have to do is pick through and toss out all the bad guys. Ew. Okay, the amount of time that it's gonna take for you to sort through and hull your strawberries depends on the amount of strawberries you have. But the time now is 10.19, so we are almost ready to start really cooking our jam. Um, I've separated out my strawberries into three grades, too young, just right, getting kind of old, and everything else got tossed into my compost. So. Too Young has white areas on it, sometimes a lot of white areas on it. This one was just picked before it was fully ripe. So those guys go into the blender. Um, sometimes it's just a little bit of paleness, but I find that that actually does end up transferring to the jam. So uh, if you've got any sort of unlovely pale spots, put those guys into the blender making sure that you've got no leaves uh, in with them. So almost. Um, okay. Now we've got our awesome, perfectly ripe strawberries. There is no whiteness to any of them. These guys going to give them just a quartering and they are going to go into my four cup measure. Now, if you've got some of these Mondo big strawberries, maybe when you quarter them, you're like, hey, uh, that still seems like a bit of a big slice to go you know, on to jam. Well, okay, you could chop them a little bit more if they're Mondo big strawberries, but we do want this to be a visibly strawberry jam with nice 
chunks of strawberry. So if you've got medium to small sized strawberries, a quartering will be enough. If you've got a smaller one, maybe just a half. I'm still gonna quarter. And then with these big ones, maybe you wanna do them in pretty slices. And then you've got that nice heart shape that strawberries get when you slice them. So slice all of those up now. What are we gonna do with these? These are the getting a little bit old. Notice how between a ripe strawberry and this one, see how the skin's gotten kind of flat around the seeds instead of the seeds kind of dimpling in? If it's lost, it's dimples. It's got a lot of nice natural sugar in there, but it's starting to get old and it won't look as pretty as slices in your jam. So put it in the blender. You might notice, where's a good one? Uh, this guy here. See this spot right here? This is a bruise. So on this strawberry, this is the area that might get moldy first. And I think I'm just gonna slice that off, put that little scrap into my compost. Oops, missed. And then drop it into the blender. Most of these, the bruises aren't too bad looking. I just need to make sure that I don't toss any leaves into the blender. And I just blend those all up. You could use a food processor for this if you want it to be more chunky. But uh, yeah, for me, blender is the trick. So I'm going to finish uh, slicing up these strawberries, putting them in there, and then we're going to blend up this. We're going to measure how much quantity of fruit we've got. Okay, the good looking strawberries are sliced. Here's the less optimal looking ones. Let's get some juice in with them so that they are easier to blend. Now I'm lucky that this is a blood orange because it's gonna kind of give an enhancing dark red color to it, but it's also not very juicy, I'm noticing. So I might need to put in a little bit of water. You'll see that in some recipes where they say, hey, add in some water to this, but I just hate adding in water without flavor. I suppose if you had like a berry flavored juice, you could add that or maybe something mild like apple juice. The truly mildest would be a pear juice, but I don't have any of that. I'm going to put a little bit of lemon zest into this, which means I need to find my potato peeler. There it is. And what I'm going to do to get the zest off the lemon is just potato peel it off. See how I'm leaving behind most of the white? So I've got majority just the lemon. There we go with that one, two, three. I'm just gonna put the zest of a whole lemon in there. Could you use one of those weird little uh, scraper things that gives you tiny little shavings? Yes, and you could do that directly into the sliced lemon, or you can put it in your blender in your food processor and uh, let that do all the work. Okay, now I slice my lemon. Now that's more juicy. more like it. Now some people prefer using store-bought lemons and if you were going to be doing this uh, for home canning where you're going to be keeping it on a shelf outside of a refrigerator, yeah totally because what the companies have done when they're making uh, bottled lemon juice is uh, they're making sure that there's a consistent acidity to it. But for what we're doing, where it's just going to go into the refrigerator, 
we can get by with uh, maybe a little bit less acidity and more sweetness if we've got something more like a, a Meyer lemon, which is sometimes almost as sweet as an orange. Uh, we can get by with the brighter, fresher flavor, but less of the acidity. Some people use apple cider vinegar. Um, I find that gives it more of a pickly flavor than a strawberry jammy flavor, but yeah, to each their own. Okay, I'm gonna just put in this pulp that I've cleared of seeds, any of the rest of the juices. And I don't think that's quite enough liquid. So uh, instead of squeezing another lemon, I'm gonna uh, squeeze another couple of those blood oranges and see if I can get my liquid level up to the, uh, let's see. yeah, up to the, uh, the four to six ounce level. And then I will have enough liquid in there for this to blend nicely. Okay, here we go. We've got the blended up subprime strawberries, the sliced up perfect strawberries, uh, the juice of what was that? Four or five blood oranges and one lemon, plus the zest of the lemon and the zest from one of the oranges. And we have more then four cups of fruit because here's four cups and yes there's some air bubbles still but we still have two cups more here in our blender so that's six cups total of fruit which means six cups of sugar or sugar substitute okay now we've got to figure out how we're going to make this strawberry jam jam instead of just being cooked strawberries now i have seen some recipes that use gelatin, strawberry jello or unflavored gelatin. Basically, if you use this, you are just making a very soft jello that you can spread that has a bunch of fruit pulp in it. I don't recommend it because, uh, yeah, it's jello. If I wanted jello, I would have just made strawberry jello with strawberries floating in it. So I'm not going to use this. Then there's options like uh, uh, cornstarch. And uh, you might have something like this that's a strawberry gel-like thing. What it's doing is it's using cornstarch to do the thickening. And you will have uh, sort of a glaze kind of strawberry dish and it will look really pretty, but it's not gonna have that jamness that you're expecting. It'd be great for topping on top of a tart or other dessert, but I'm not going to go with a cornstarch option. There's clear gel starch, which is awesome stuff. And I love this when I'm cupboard canning some pie filling, like apple pie filling or ch uh, cherry pie filling or peach pie filling. This is great for that, but it has a similar texture to the cornstarch uh, gel glaze stuff. So I'm not going to use that either. And that brings us to pectin. Pectin comes from plants. It's part of the peel of apples. I think usually they uh, drive it from uh, apples. But hey, look, even on here, it's got their box, a strawberry, and a lemon. I mean, that's basically what you do. This is another brand. Instead of coming in a packet, this is in a jar. Um, both of them totally work. I don't have any brand loyalty. Go with what is cheap. Now, if you're staying inside for quarantine, but you managed to get a bunch of strawberries and you wanna make them into jam because they're turning kind of subprime on you and you can't get any of this where you're at, go ahead and use the cornstarch. Go ahead and use it if you've got it. 
or use the gelatin if that's what you've got, but you've got to eat these very quickly. The pectin will last just a little bit longer, in my opinion. So uh, you could follow the recipes on the back of these, but basically uh, one of these is good for about four cups of fruit. So, um, you know, whatever the recipe is on here, let's see. One old box is six tablespoons of this pectin. I love how they call this the old box, even though uh, this was best by August 2019. And this one is still current for, uh, for April of 2020. So um, actually, both of these are past their prime, but um, I'm still going to use them because uh, they were in my cupboard. Um, I'm going to go with the old box because I love the old box. It still has the old artwork. It's got recipes inside. Yeah, I'm totally going to do this one, but I'm going to need to add in some extra because this package is good for four cups. So I'm going to have to add in another three tablespoons from this or find another box and use a bag and a half of it. So yeah, these are what I'm going to use for thickening. Okay, here we are over the top of our pot and I'm going to add in the fruit. There's two cups from the blender and four cups there. Gonna get out my spatula so I don't miss any little strawberries. Everybody goes into the pot. We need to bring this up to temperature. So I'm gonna put it to medium high. Okay, I'm not quite up to temperature yet, but I'm gonna Sprinkle in my pectin a little bit at a time. Some people can sprinkle with their left hand and stir with their right, or sprinkle with their right hand and stir with their left. Uh, I'm not very good at this. Now, if you look at the recipes that they have on the inside of the sheets, I'm using more pectin than they say to use, but they also have a thing here. What do you do if your freezer jam or jelly doesn't set and you remake it adding more pectin anyway? So if there is a possibility that I'm going to have to add more pectin anyway, why didn't I just do that at the beginning? So I've got half sugar, half monk's fruit going on. Now you want to stir this pretty consistently because you don't want it to stick to the bottom. If you end up leaving it too long, particularly as it gets thicker, uh, it will scald to the bottom. And that's never tasty because it will have that burnt flavor all the way through your entire jam. I just realized I forgot to tell you the time when we started. It's been about 15 minutes since we started this and we've got another about 15 to go. So it's 30 minutes of, of cooking time when it's, once it's up to temperature. Well, once it's up to boiling. We need to get it all the way up to 220 though. And once we're, we've got it there, we're gonna hold it at that temperature for another three to five minutes. And then we'll be ready to ladle it into our containers. 
Yes, this takes a very long time. And now you cannot beat a big brand like Smucker's when it comes to convenience and cheap price. But you can totally beat them on amazingly great flavor, customizing it to just what you want. You can absolutely do this same thing with raspberries. Raspberries have a nice high acid content similar to strawberries. Ah, another one of those strawberry blobs. This is really boiling away. Are we up to temperature yet? Oh, just a couple degrees short. You can do this with blackberries. The blackberries have less acid, so you're gonna to wanna to put in double the lemon juice when it comes to blackberries. Blueberries, um, I believe they're, they're acidic. I don't know where they uh, go versus strawberries, but a little bit of lemon juice won't hurt blueberries. Besides, I love the taste of blueberries with lemon curd, so I can't imagine that the lemon blueberry combo would be bad. With things like peaches and apricots, definitely make sure that you're putting that citrus juice in with them. Uh, if you're doing plums, plums have a lot of natural pectin, so you're going to end up with something super stiff if you put as much pectin in with them as I just did with my strawberries. Are there yet? Ooh, ooh. I know it's hard for you to see on the camera, but we are just at the right temperature. So we're going to hold it there for five more minutes. It's 11.06 right now. Give you the time scale. Okay, here we are. We cooked it for 30 minutes. It got up to temperature. We held it there. Now we are ready to uh, put it in our containers and either freeze gift or a uh, immediately consume. So this is what's going into my refrigerator and this one has a wide enough opening I can just directly scoop in. But if I was worried about it splashing all around I would bring over my freezer. Now always have, I've got a whole bunch of these little plastic containers for the freezer. You always want to have more jars clean than you think you're going to use. Because there's nothing worse than only having a few jars and a whole pot of hot jam just waiting. And this is like the messiest part of this entire thing. This is also like the scariest part of the entire thing because uh, like I showed you, this was boiling hot seconds ago, scalding hot, and I don't want to get it onto my skin because it would be like sugary napalm just sticking to me and burning. The delicious form of napalm. Now, is my jam jam enough? This is still pretty hot, but if I put a cold spoon on the back, see how it's really thick? Soon as it cools down, see how it's kind of like clumping together? This is gonna be mm, a very tasty jam. I'm gonna eat this. So it's 11.23 and um, all the jam is in containers. I have uh, purposely scalded my pot so that I can show people how to uh, clean that if it happens. And um, now I'm just um, enjoying the fruits of my labor off of a cold spoon. And this is really good. I could put it on toast. 
or just eat it off the spoon. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this has been fun for you. I hope you're inspired to do a whole bunch of fun, cool things. Go out there, try stuff, have fun, and be safe. Just gave me a scalding berry stigmata. Well, oh, that was delicious.